Hello guys and welcome to another video and in this one we're going to be looking at Ascendancy reworks because in Crucible League we got two of these Ascendancy reworks and I think it's fair to say that these have had somewhat of a mixed reaction. The Pathfinder Ascendancy rework has been a huge success with lots and lots of people playing it in Crucible League leading to a big increase in popularity league on league from Sanctum but in the case of the Saboteur it's basically the opposite of that, where this Ascendancy has actually had a decent popularity in previous leagues. In 320 Sanctum, it had about a 7% play rate in the Softcore Trade League, but it's fallen off quite considerably, down to about 3% in the Crucible League. And I still think this Ascendancy probably needs a bit more time to have its potential fully unlocked and worked out by the community. But the loss of powerful dedicated trap and mine stats on the Ascendancy has hurt it quite a bit, at least in the short term. But this video is not really about those two Ascendancies, because actually, if you didn't stick around after the Crucible content reveal livestream to watch the Q&A with Chris Wilson and Ziggy D, you may have missed some really important information about Ascendancy reworks that Chris went into great detail about. When asked about the weaker Ascendancies such as Gladiator and why they're not being addressed in Crucible League, Chris went into great detail on how exactly the new Ascendancy reworks were founded and potentially what's to come in 3.22. Check it out. We wanted to nerf all the Ascendancies in Ruthless, for power reasons. And so we looked into what that would involve. Pretty quick numeric nerfs. And while doing so, we came up with a whole bunch of new interesting stats. And we said, okay, well, we cannot release these stats in just Ruthless right? Because that would be crazy. The community who already have low patience for any Ruthless stuff that we do would certainly find it unfair that we gave Ruthless a bunch of new interesting tools alongside a pile of nerfs. <laughs> so we said, why don't we change all the ascendancies in the core game to use these new stats as well? Not nerfing them, just making them like we've done with the, uh, the Pathfinder and the Saboteur here. And so we started on that. And the plan was to do about half the ascendancies in 321. And then also do all the ruthless ones at the same time, figuring that's fair because there's enough stuff given to the base game. Unfortunately, we didn't get it to a state where it would actually be releasable. Many of those ascendancies were going well, but they weren't quite finished. You know, the internal feedback was to the point where it felt a little bit like a nerf in some cases, or we weren't, or it felt too much like a buff, or we weren't quite there, and we obviously can't release it unless we've had time. So then we had a situation where we're really happy with the Pathfinder and Saboteur. They're going great. And all the ruthless ones are sitting there with new stats on them. And so we intentionally undid all the ruthless changes there to stop there being an outcry and so that we get more time to sit on it and work out what we're doing in the base game. And so the intention is that we do have stockpiled a large number of ascendancy changes from when we get time to do it properly, which hopefully will include a, you know, many in 322. And we just have to work out politically what we do with said ruthless changes, because I would love to release them. I mean, they're not quite ready. Like, I'm not saying we want permission to put them in 321, but we're at some stage likely to debut that set of stuff because we do feel the power level of ascendancies and ruthless is too high relative to items and so long story short an answer to the question of when did the other ascendancy classes get some love the love is half done and so yeah it's coming this is super interesting to learn that these changes were founded on ruthless and i think if you're a fan of some of the weaker ascendancies like gladiator or assassin you can get your hopes up for 3.22 because there's a decent chance that those ascendancies and potentially many others get some much needed changes. If you're a fan of the stronger ascendancies, well, I'd be tentatively optimistic about that because I think those classes may get tweaks or reworks to bring their power level down a bit. But either way, I think the news that 3.22 may contain a great deal of ascendancy reworks is very exciting, and I feel that 3.22 is already going to be a huge league, especially with it directly following ExileCon. I think they want it to have a huge impact to capitalise on the community buzz following those announcements. But I think the ascendancy changes have a little bit more basis behind them rather than just being founded on Ruthless. You see, if we go back in time to ExileCon in 2019, during the developer keynote on the topic of the new Ascendancies that are coming in PoE2, Rory Rackham, senior game designer at Grinding Gear Games, had this to say about part of Exile 2's Ascendancies. You'll notice there's a lot less of the stat cluster, clutter on these nodes. We've only got two stats on this thing. It's just giving a strong damage bonus, which is something we've really focused on these new Ascendancy right. classes. We just one really impactful or two really impactful things going right, on, right. rather than spreading it all over the place which is going to require a bit of a rebalance from the older synthesis as well. We'll see how they fit into that as, right. they, as they bring them up to the same level. 
This is interesting because I think we can actually already see this approach coming through on the reworked Saboteur and the reworked Pathfinder, where those new and changed Ascendancy Notables only have one or two impactful stats. For example, the Saboteur's new Notables like Clockwork, Perfect Crime and Bomb Specialist each have two lines, and over on the Pathfinder, both the Nature's Adrenaline and Nature's Boon have a single very impactful stat. And I think this approach will make the balancing of ascendancies easier across the board. And we can see from the popularity of Pathfinder this league, that this doesn't really have a detrimental effect on how useful a class is, because even though these notables have one or two stats, these stats are very powerful and have a huge impact on your build. So with all of this information, it makes me very, very optimistic for the 3.22 league. As I mentioned earlier, I think GGG will be wanting to go all out on this to make it a huge league. They've already held off on the Atlas expansion, which would usually have taken place in the Crucible League slot. But it's likely that they wanted to save that for ExileCon, similar to how they revealed the Conquerors of the Atlas expansion at ExileCon 2019. That was the Atlas expansion that introduced Cirrus. And there's likely to be something similar in the 3.22 League with new endgame bosses. And we already know that 3.22 is going to be a league that's going to directly follow ExileCon. We know that ExileCon is on the 29th and 30th of July. And then the 3.22 League launch will be about two weeks after ExileCon, so it'll be in the middle of August. So 3.22 is shaping up to be a juicy league. What do you guys think of the Ascendancy reworks? Do you think we'll see a lot of Ascendancy reworks in 3.22? And what about the actual type of Ascendancy reworks? What would you like to see on specific classes? I mean, we saw the changes to Saboteur introducing the new trigger archetype to Saboteur and making that a focus of the class. Maybe other classes could get new archetypes introduced to their Ascendancies and have these things more of a focus of the class. Let me know down in the comment section below, guys. And as always, stay tuned and stay safe.